moving on to our next chapter which is the ecosystem before explaining what ecosystem is i must tell you what human activities actually lead to what type of waste in the environment human activities whether it is a man made activity resulting from industrial purposes or from any other purposes it leads to production of various type of pollution some of them include air pollution water and soil pollution the materials which are produced as a waste from industries or from any other uh, phenomena it is of two types one is the biodegradable waste and other is the non biodegradable uh, degradable waste biodegradable waste is that waste which can be exactly decomposed into harmless substances it is the decomposition of a harmful substance into a harmless substance by the action of microorganisms so those are the biodegradable waste which can be biodegraded by the action of microorganisms these includes vegetables fruits pulses cereals cotton jute wool wood leather paper animal dung or animal bones so these all are the examples of biodegradable waste which are the harmful substances that can be easily decomposed by the action of microorganisms and can be converted into harmless substances the other category which is the non biodegradable waste it is that waste which cannot be decomposed by the action of microorganisms and these include polythene bags plastics synthetic fibers glass metals synthetic rubber insecticides and pesticides so these are the those waste which cannot be acted upon by microorganisms so they cannot be converted into harmless substances now what actually ecosystem is and what ecosystem has a relation to these substances ecosystem is just an association of a living environment with other living environment and even its non living environment so it is actually association of living organisms with other living organisms of that area and also with the non living ecosystem or non living environment persisting in the particular region or a particular area so ecosystem it is that association of living organisms in a area in a prescribed area with the non living components and with other living components there are two types of ecosystem one ecosystem is natural and other one is artificial natural ecosystem is that ecosystem which is occurring naturally in the environment such as forest deserts grasslands mountains all these are naturally occurring ecosystems artificial ecosystems are the man made ecosystem just as aquarium it is a crop field gardens parks which are not naturally occurring but they are built up by the human beings other moving on to various components of ecosystem the first component is a biotic component biotic term suggest any living thing so that means ki biotic components comprises of all living components of an ecosystem what are the living components that occurs in a ecosystem living components comprises of all living organisms the first category of any ecosystem is producer producer is that organism which is able to produce something which is able to synthesize the food material in producers we categorize green plants because green plants are those which can actually synthesize their own food with the help of photosynthesis so in uh, category of producers we always mention green plants the next category is consumer consumers are those herbivores which actually feed on producers for their food because they cannot synthesize their own food by themselves so they fall in the category of consumers decomposers decomposers like microorganisms they are those microorganisms which decompose dead plants and dead animals so they are falling in the category of decomposers moving on to abiotic components which are actually non living components since plants for photosynthesis they require many living as well as non living components and non living components that are required by plants for photosynthesis include sunlight temperature air minerals so all these are the abiotic components which are the non living components of the ecosystem what is food chain food chain is a flow of food from one organism to another it is a flow of food energy from one organism to another and another organism to next and so on this is a food chain which comprises of a sequence of uh, energy transfer from one level to another level and another level to next on so it actually starts with a producer producer can be a grass can be it can be a plant or it can be any any green plant which fall in the category of producer it starts with producer and it ends with a carnivore which is which can be a tertiary or secondary carnivore i'll i'll be explaining all these just let us consider one example grass is a producer grass is eaten up by deer and deer is eaten up by loin so grass is a producer deer is a primary consumer which is actually feeding on the producer which i have told this is a herbivore and then is a carnivore which is feeding on this herbivore so this is a chain which is occurring and this chain is known as food chain 
Another example, grass is eaten by insects and insects are eaten by frog, frog is eaten by snake. So this is another category of food chain which ends at tertiary consumer. So grass is a producer, insects is a primary consumer, frog is a secondary consumer and snake is a tertiary consumer. Another example is grass is eaten by moth, moth is fed upon by frog, frog is fed upon by snake and snake is eaten by hawk. So this is another example of how food chain persists in the environment. Now these are some examples of food chain in different types of ecosystem because ecosystem can be a terrestrial ecosystem, it can be a pond ecosystem, it can be a marine ecosystem. So therefore different types of food chain persist in different types of ecosystem. Let us consider this example. If you consider example of grassland biome and we see that various type of food chain which exist in grassland. Grass is eaten up by grasshopper, grasshopper by rat, rat is eaten up by snake and snake by hawk. So this is a type of food chain persisting in a grassland biome. Similarly, in ponds, uh, the producer are the algae which can be green algae or any phytoplankton. This algae is eaten up by mosquito or lava, mosquito by another dragonfly which is a large fly and this it is eaten by fish and fish is eaten by large fishes or raccoons or various other carnivores. So this is a food chain which persists in a pond. Similarly, the similar type of food chain it persists in oceans. So this is all, this is all the example of how food chain exists. The next is food web. There is a difference between food chain and food web. Food chain is a linear flow of energy from one level to another level. However, food web is a cyclic flow of energy. Why we call it cyclic? Because it is interconnection of various food chains. Because if you consider any plant, it can be eaten up by various types of insects. So this is, if, if I consider that this plant is eaten up by, by a single insect and the single insect is eaten by another big insect or consumer, so this is a food chain. But this plant is eaten up by various other types of insects, various other species also. So this is another food chain, this is third food chain and this is a fourth food chain. That means a producer is eaten up by four organisms, so therefore four chains are persisting. That's why we call it food web. Food web is actually interconnection of various types of food chains. So it is not a single food chain but a multiple food chains which are existing in the environment. In the cases of food web usually there are large number of producers which are present at the first trophic level. First trophic level is that trophic level where producers lie and higher levels are known as second, third and fourth and so on trophic levels. This is what trophic level is. In the first trophic level, always producers will exist. Producers are the green plants that will synthesize food. Producers will be acted upon by herbivores, then carnivores, scandry, primary, all types of carnivores. Normally, these ecology, we call it ecological pyramid it, it, because it takes a shape of pyramid and I'll explain you why this shape is uh, like a pyramid and not some other shape because producer is eaten about by herbivore and whenever the energy is transferred from a producer to a herbivore, it is always lost in the environment. Only 10% of energy is transferred from this level to this level. So one trophic level, two, three and four. That's why in any trophic level, you'll see that there will not be more than four or five trophic levels because the energy is always lost in the environment. It is not uh, present so that it can be used by other organisms. So why this and how this energy flow actually occurs? Let us consider these are the category of producers. Whenever these producers will be consumed by the consumers, out of this only 10% of energy will be transferred to consumers and 90% of the energy will be lost in the surrounding environment. Similarly moving on to second stage, here also when secondary consumers consume primary consumers, only 10% of energy is used by them, however 90% of energy is lost by them. Let us consider a simple example, suppose producers are having a thousand kilocalorie of energy. Since I told you that from moving from producer to primary consumer stage, only 10% of this energy will be used. 10% of 1000 is 100 kilocalorie. This means only 100 kilocalorie is used by primary consumers and 90% is lost. Moving on to next trophic level, in secondary consumers again 10% of 100. 10% of 100 is uh, again 10 kilocalorie. So this 10 kilocalorie is energy which is left to be consumed by secondary consumers and 90% of the remaining energy it is lost in the environment. Again moving from secondary consumer to tertiary consumer, 
10% of 10 kilo calories, 1 kilo calorie, which is actually consumed by tertiary consumers and 90% of the energy it is lost in the environment. This is a similar example in which we have taken the 1000 units of energy. This is a 1000 unit of energy when it moves from producer to first level consumer, only 100 units of energy it is consumed by first level consumers and rest all is lost. And similarly, 10% uh, of energy is consumed by another trophic levels and 90% is lost at each trophic level. Last is the biological magnification. What happens during each trophic level, there are some harmful substances which are present at the phytoplankton stage or which are present at the producer stage. So these harmful substances tend to be consumed by consumers, tend to be consumed by herbivores as well. So the last trophic level which consists of mammals or human beings, they have a high level of high concentration of harmful substances inside them. Suppose we spray some uh, in insecticides and pesticides to get rid, uh, get rid of insects and pests from the plants. What happens when these insecticides or pesticides are sprayed upon uh, by the producers? So they are consumed by herbivores. After herbivores, they are consumed by primary tertiary consumers. In the tertiary consumers, we have a category of human beings. So human beings will have a maximum concentration of those harmful substances in the body. This means that the increase in the harmful concentration in the body of organism which are present at the higher trophic level, it is known as the biological magnification. So this is what a biological magnification is.